Today at shopdap.com, we're gonna be showing you how to replace axles on a B7 Audi A4. Okay, so we're gonna be replacing axles. Uh, originally, this car actually has two bad inner CV boots that are bad. One of them is so bad that it's pretty much bone dry. So instead of replacing the CV boot, first of all, getting extremely dirty, uh, and second of all, potentially risking a bad axle because this car does have a vibration issue that uh, is potentially related to that really dry joint. We're just gonna replace them with aftermarket axles. This, the price difference is not significantly different. So uh, in this particular case, instead of doing a boot, we're going to go ahead and replace the complete axle. Now, before you install axles, you do wanna make sure that you have the right ones. Now, in this particular case, this car takes the same axle on the left and right side. We did compare these two. There's a slight variation between the two. They're actually the same manufacturer, but one of them looks like the production date is slightly different than the other, which is why there's some variance. The, we have checked the part numbers. These two do match. And when we remove the axle, we are gonna look at it to compare before we attempt to install this to make sure that it looks correct. We're gonna start by removing our wheels from the car, 17 millimeter. You're probably gonna be doing this on the ground. I don't like working on the ground, so I'm using air on a lift. I know, I know what you're thinking. I'm gonna spoil a little Maybe that's true. Doesn't change how I feel. Okay, so now we're just gonna put some wheel bolts in these holes and I'm gonna snug these down. And the reason why is we're gonna use this brake rotor to break this axle bolt loose. The set screw for the rotor right there is the only thing that holds this on and it's questionable whether that's gonna be capable of actually holding the torque that we need. So we're just gonna snug these up and then we'll come back with our stuff to break this loose. So what we're gonna be using is a screwdriver that's gonna go into the vents of the rotor like so. We are going to be using this one. This is a pre-bent screwdriver. Uh, that's a Phillips. And a Phillips really messed that one up. We're also using a 17 millimeter Allen. You're probably not gonna have one that big. It is kind of a special tool, but it's something that you do need to make this thing possible. Now, you can drop your screwdriver. I'm actually gonna use it. I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna put it in here so it doesn't fall out. We are just gonna break this thing loose. As you can see, it's not that easy. There we go. All you need is a really long ratchet. I would suggest if you're having trouble breaking this loose and you're using a normal ratchet, which you probably will be, uh, you can put a pipe on the end of it, which gives you uh, additional leverage and, it, and it's really what you need to make that happen a lot of times. Okay, so we're gonna be working on the inner axle here and we're gonna be removing these triple square bolts. We are, you do need to hold this axle, so we will continue to leave the axle splined on the inner side and then use the screwdriver in the rotor to continue to hold it. All right, so we're gonna break our first one loose right here. And this is a 10 millimeter triple square. Ow! So then what we're gonna do is use our screwdriver to rotate this to get each screw in a, the place where you need it to be and then you can prop it up to hold it in place when you get it inside the caliper back here and hold it and then we're gonna break each one loose as we go around until we're done and we're gonna get you back to you when we get there. Okay, so last thing we're gonna do, we got this last bolt loosening out and you can see this is wiggling around pretty easily and all we're gonna do is take that out and now this is completely loose. Okay, so now that our inner is completely loose here, we can slide our axle out. So I'm just gonna push this kind of up. You push this joint towards the outside to make it compress to give us as much room as possible. And then we're just gonna pull this out like so. What I'm kind of doing is I'm trying to make sure we have enough space to work with. And I we may have to turn this to where you can't see anything. And then we can pull our axle out. Okay, one thing I wanted to mention, this car, this is the outer axle and this splines in, it just slides in to the hub here. Now this has splines on it. Because we are in the south, this thing had no corrosion and pulled out immediately without any problems. If you are in the north, it's possible this thing is gonna have corrosion that's got it stuck in there and you're gonna have to use a chisel or a hammer uh, and a screwdriver to try to push that and break it loose from the splines itself. You have to be careful when you're doing that because you could damage the inner threads here. If you damage these threads, you're gonna ruin the axle if you're gonna be trying to reuse the axle and put boots on it. If you're not, you can just hammer the shit out of it. Just make sure you don't mess up the threads and the splines on the inside of this hub. 
Here we are on the passenger side. So we have all these bolts loose, but this inner flange does not want to come off. So we got a pry bar and kind of prop, pop that off and we're loose. Now I'm gonna see if this is gonna come off as easy as the driver's side. I am gonna rotate this, uh, this steering assembly out like this because I know that's gonna give us the most room. What we're gonna do is pull this inner axle in and then push it towards the front here. There are some lines that are in the way here that are a little bit more of a problem. And then we're gonna see, it looks like this one pops out just as easy. The main question is, if we can get it to get far back enough to actually come out. So because we cannot get enough movement and don't have enough room on the passenger side, we're gonna be taking the upper control arms loose from this steering knuckle right here. So we're gonna start with this pinch bolt right here and this is a 16 millimeter that we're gonna to use to break this loose. Swing on it there, nothing happens. This side's coming loose, but we're gonna need some penetrating oil now. Again, we're in the south where this is usually not as big of a deal, but I can tell you right now, if you're in a place where there's a lot of corrosion, these are brutal. So uh, you're gonna to wanna to make sure before you even get started, you probably start working with penetrating oil on this because it's probably gonna to need to sit for a while. Torches are very common in the north uh, where you have to torch out this thing and completely melt this bolt down and run, the, run all the pieces out of it. So I scrapped the idea of going with the top one because ours is seized in there and that bolt was gonna snap if I continue to mess with it. So I've loosened this one on the control arm here and we're gonna take this bolt out. It's just a, a bolt here and a nut on the inside. You hold on, it's an 18 millimeter. And we're gonna get this guy out and see if this will give us enough pull in the outward direction to allow it to loosen. If that one doesn't work, I'm gonna do the front lower control arm on the inner side. So now with that, that should give us more to work with. The question is, is it enough? That's a, that's a whole different question, but we're gonna find out. There we go. Piece of cake. Now this axle, I've pushed all this all the way down so we can get as much clearance as possible. We're gonna feed this in and I might need some help from Nathan again to pull on that axle a little bit and that knuckle assembly to get that in place. Hold on one sec. All right, good. All right, good. So what you just saw was this axle going in, but what I was actually doing is, the hard part is you have to get the tip of that axle to clear all this, this, and then the wheel bearing housing of the knuckle right here to get that actually seated in. So you gotta kinda twist the tip as he's pulling out and push it into place there. So what I'm gonna do now is get the outer portion of the axle splined in with the wheel hub. So if you see those straight lines, you gotta get them to kind of sit right. So what I'm gonna do is get it in there and then I should be able to just wiggle them in place. And so if you see, this kind of sits in right when you get it in there properly. So I'm gonna get this bolt in place here and I'm just gonna pull this assembly in until I can get this hole to line up and then I'm gonna slide this in. Now, We'll include the torque spec on screen for this. You need to hold it on the back side. Uh, and here, you should consider getting alignment done after loosening any suspension component, this part included. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of options. Hopefully, if you're a vehicle, you may be able to get the axle out, but in this particular one, because of where those lines are, uh, it, it changes the dynamic a little bit. Now we're gonna install our inner axle. You will wanna seat this joint into the flange properly, get it seated flat, and then thread your bolts in. We're gonna show the torque specs for this on screen here and then uh, proceed with torquing those as we go around. You will wanna make sure you put, spin it around and you can put a screwdriver in the rotor to allow you to hold the axle from turning while you're torquing them. Okay, so now we're gonna tighten our axle bolt. Now this is something that you, a lot of people might do if you take the center cap out of the wheel, hold the brakes, put the car on the ground uh, and tighten this with it in the car. You're not gonna wanna hold it and have too much torque on this caliper and the, and the rotor itself. You could damage it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our initial torque and we'll put that initial torque on screen and then you're gonna be doing a, uh, a partial turn. So we'll show you the degrees on screen after that. So, uh, you know, obviously you have 360 degrees in a circle. If it's 180, you're gonna be going one full half turn all the way around. Uh, so we're gonna do our 
complete turn and finish up our install. But we're gonna leave you here and then thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.